Wow, wow, wow. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, um, I was telling Jennifer earlier, when you get up here, you kind of want to have your act together. <laughs> Thank the Lord he has his act together. And clearly Bill's got his act together. <laughs> Would you like a pillow? <laughs> Trying to bring us back to the glory days of chilling. <laughs> well, um, happy Thanksgiving. Um, oh, it's such a great time, you know. <laughs> Would you like to put your feet up here? <laughs> anyway, it was so wonderful to gather with family and have that time of connection and... Um, Right, right before Thanksgiving, we had our, our church-wide potluck. How many were here for that, the potluck? I, I was like, wow, I don't think anybody in the sanctuary didn't go to the potluck, I think. It was fantastic, and the Lord multiplied the food. You know how that happens. And um, it was just, like, so rich. Like, you know, Thanksgiving gravy, rich, you know. And nobody wanted to leave. It went on and on. It was just like... So it was great fellowship, and, and we were talking with some of the people like, you know, this is just a manifestation of what the Lord is doing. It was just so encouraging, and our journey groups have been so good since they started in the fall, just deep and rich, and, and we're just watching this beautiful thing emerge. It was just, it was a real encouragement and confirmation of, of what the Lord has called us to do here in this house. You know, it's about the main thing, which is connection, and that's an abiding connection. I mentioned to a pastor this week that, you know, we, the Lord abides in us, and we abide in the Lord. But this was the first time I actually considered, you know, we actually abide in one another, not just with one another, but in one another. Like, we're held so deeply in each other's heart it's like the way Christ lives with us. And I, I don't know, that was just like a new thing for me to consider this week as I pondered it. Um, in John 14, 20, he says, on that day you will realize, like you'll realize that I am in my Father, you're in me and I'm in you. And then he calls us to do this same thing with each other, to manifest his abidingness, if that's a word, in each other. You know, it's just so cool. I just never saw it that way before. And uh, as, as I was discussing this with Pastor, he was saying like, truly at the end of your life, what you want to be surrounded with, the sum total of your life, what you want to be surrounded with is not doctrine. You know, it's not the whiz bang. Amen. It is literally the ones you love. Those that have loved you, you have loved. The depth and the beauty and the fruit of your whole life is summed up in that connection. And that's really, really the main thing. And everything else, frankly, is just small potatoes compared to that surpassing worth. Small potatoes, you know? So keeping the... Uh, there was a movie, City Slickers, where I forget the guy turns, turns to me and goes, you know, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And this is the main thing, is the connection that God has with us and that we have uh, with one another. And when we talk about the spirit, I asked Bill one time, you know, no pressure. I always like to see if I can trump him. It's kind of hard when he's on the floor, but um, I, so what exactly is the spirit, you know? And he says, well, the, the spirit is the motivation. Like what? <laughs> Sue leaves. I love it. <laughs> Bill, you just have this way with connection. So, so the spirit is the motivation of the heart. Like, what spirit are we of? What is motivating the responses that we have? And this comes through the heart. So, the spirit of the Lord comes to live in our heart, and he, he is he is the source then. That spirit is the spirit we're of, and that's the spirit that motivates our hearts. What motivates him is this, has to be the same thing that motivates us. So this, is, this spirit is perfect love. 
God is love. Okay, big deal, right? We know this. Uh, but this love has a whole lot of power. This power is really interesting because you're like, okay, so let's go back. What is, what is the power? And let's, let's look at, at how Jesus loves us. He says, I will never leave, nor will I forsake you. Lo, I will be with you always. So this morning we're singing of his enduring love. All right, so this, this occurred to me this morning. It's really um, his everness, forever. Okay, his everness, if it's ever, it can't have a beginning, nor can it have an end. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I think, I mean, don't call this doctrine. This is just, you know, what I, I felt this morning, but his perfect love creates eternity. This connection has no beginning and no end. It's enduring. This is the love we're to have for one another. Like nothing can separate. So, when you read Romans 8, 38, I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, nor angels or demons, are neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed, nothing in all creation can ever, ever separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Do you realize how powerful that is? Yes. Like, if nothing can separate us, there's some really stinking big power there. Like, if nothing can separate, it creates an eternal bond that endures forever and ever, that endures all things. Nothing can separate. That's power. This, this power is, is transfiguring. This kind of power changes you. I mean, how many of you guys, like, have had this, this, this love walk, this connectional bond thing we do here change your life, how you do life? There's one. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, I, since, since I've been going here and sitting under pastor, I mean, I am, I am such a completely different person. And people know it. I mean, people know it. It's not just like a hidden thing. People know it. So, so this transfiguring power is a high point of connection. It's a mountain of transfiguration. So you understand that like when the Israelites were invited up to this mountain of God to meet with God, and they chose a different response, they turned away from the connection. Do you see how it takes a turning to reconnect? Like there's different points of our life where we kind of get busy or something, whatever, and we're like, oh, oh. You have to turn to this connection. It, it, it is a choice. It is a desire. You have to turn back to it. And don't be too cocky about this mountain of transfiguration where we go, yes, Lord, I'm not afraid of the thunder and lightning. I'll go up. I'm not afraid. Look, we, we really do think we have this connection thing down. Paul knew that. He thought he was really connected to God, right? He was a Pharisee. He was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He had the connection thing down. He did. But then he got transfigured. <laughs> he kind of got knocked off his high horse. Changed, he did. Okay? And, and so this is what that man had to say in Ephesians 3.17. I pray. This is in his earnestness to you. This letter to the Ephesians is also a letter to you. I pray that you, being rooted and established in this love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp. I mean, you've got to grasp how wide, 
how long, high, and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses your knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Like, you have to grasp those measurements to know the fullness of God. This love is like this deep well. It springs up in you to eternal life. It's powerful connection, and it cannot be broken. It, it just can't. Nothing can break it. But it requires something. Ah, oh, the catch, the string. You have to be risky, vulnerable, open, willing to receive, even... even even from something that you don't think, you know, somebody that really rubs you the wrong way, you have to position yourself. If you'll position your heart like you're receiving from Christ or from pastor, yes. whoever, somebody you trust, if you'll position your heart, it's like crazy what will happen. But it, it takes that kind of vulnerability and it takes that kind of humility to connect that way. See, this is the love of a king. The Prince of Peace vanquished every bit of conflict with this kind of love. And this is the love you are called to have and walk in. You don't have to come up with it on your own. You just have to receive it. And suddenly it transfigures you. It changes you. This, this love is so mighty, it overcomes every power and every principality that rises up against that connection. That, that's the power of love. Wait, what's that song? Come on, Darren. Don't take money. <laughs> Need a credit card to ride this train. That's the power of love. Now y'all know why I'm down there and not up here. What? That was Huey Lewis in the news, wasn't it, or something like that? I usually get that stuff wrong. Jules the one who knows all the... Okay, so back on track. This, this Lamb of God is a giver. I can see he's a giver of love, right? He's a giver of life. He lays his life down. It's never taken. But he gives. He gives life. This is what you're called to walk in in your connection, to give life, to give your life, to give his life. So this love is very intense, very redeeming, very reconciling, very healing, very everything. You name it, it's good for it, right? This is really intense. And to our natural eyes on this mountain of transfiguration, it looks shiny. It looks really, really bright. Sometimes like so bright you can't even stare at it. And yet we're just called to gaze upon it, right? It's so white that, that garments look like snow. It's so bright. Why is it so bright? Because it reveals. It reveals something that formerly we could not see. So as we encounter this, we gaze, we experience, we position ourselves, we are changed into that image. I want you to listen to what an early church father says. Literally, we are being transfigured into that same image. It's the same verb used in the Lord's transformation, like Jesus was transfigured. It's the same as he was. You are being also transfigured. There he was transfigured before him, before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes were as white as light. And it may be noted that it is used of the same transformation, more wondrous than any poet ever dreamt, of the Christian into the likeness of the Lord. We see God mirrored in Christ, who is the image of the invisible God. And as we gaze with our face unveiled, on that mirror, a change comes over us. And we give back what we adore. In his measure, in his degree, this image. And we become what we were always meant to be. So let's look into this the mirror of this face. You know, we have this saying about face value. We take things at face value. So like if you had a coin and it's stamped on the face of it, it tells you what it's worth, right? But there's also a different value. You have a face value and intrinsic value. 
what the coin is actually worth, like what it's made of, what's inside of it, what, it, what does it really count for? So oftentimes the world relates in this face value, superficial. You know, we glance, glance off the top of things and move on to the next thing. If we don't like this, we move to the next thing. It's very wide, but not very deep, you know? But with Jesus, when we gaze on this face, we are invited into a place of deepness if we'll go further, a holy of holies, a place of intrinsic value. Now, what is this intrinsic value? Look, I mean, there's Christians all over the planet, but not everybody's gone deeper, okay? This is a journey. So we want to go into this intrinsic value so that when we're changed, not only is our, our face shining, but we want this same thing to be inside of us that's inside of him. You see, this is what the world doesn't like about superficiality. It's hypocritical because the face we show the world is not always who we really are in the heart. Okay, this is the thing that we as Christians don't like about religion. It's a thing we don't like about politics. Like you can say anything on the face of stuff, it appears to be one way. But what's really going on in the heart? This is the thing that makes it so special when you walk with Jesus. Your insides are changed. The heart, the spirit is changed. So in this intrinsic value, the lamb has deemed us worthy of everything. The Lord God our Heavenly Father has deemed us, our intrinsic value is worth everything. Jesus would rather give up his life than be without. But he is, because he's a giver, he also has a reward. What he sows, he is reaping. So you have to also look at the intrinsic value. Because we're not just looking inside and going, oh, you're so worthy. You know, no, we're, we're called to create the intrinsic value by giving our life. That assigns a value. It creates a value to that which before may not have been very worthy. But when we give ourselves to one another and abide in one another, something happens to this intrinsic value that's deep, deep, deep inside. Okay? So what we're doing is we're participating what you see at Thanksgiving, what you see in the potluck, what you see in the journey groups, what you see here, is a, what's happening is we're changing as we participate in the deeper intrinsic value of the Lord. Okay? So I had this thing happen over Thanksgiving. So, you know, did the whole cooking bit, you know, and the dessert, and then it's time to clean up. Of course, the thing with <laughs> my family... Bless their hearts, you know, you spend days cooking and they can lay waste to it in about 10 seconds, you know, and you're like, well, I hope that was worth it, <laughs> you know? And so I'm sitting there and I'm washing dishes and um, I just randomly, you know, you're daydreaming and I randomly said, you know, you know who I miss? I miss Mark. Now, Mark was a dear friend of my dad's and he died this past year. And um, it's not, he wouldn't have been there with us on Thanksgiving. Uh, he'd have been with his own family. But he was just a very dear man, and he would often eat with us, and he liked my cooking. So, you know, I was like, you know how I miss? I miss Mark. And suddenly, there was just a moment where Mark was there. It wasn't Mark. It was Jesus. But yet it wasn't just Jesus. It was Mark. It was like I became very aware, very aware. There was something available. He wasn't far. He was near. He was near. So see, nothing can separate. Not even death. Not even death. So I really don't have words for that. Um. But the reality of it was uncompromising. And um, so I processed that with the Lord. I'm like, wow, Lord, that was like a big deal. And I felt like the Lord he wasn't really saying something. He was just there. And he showed up as the spirit of truth. I was like, whoa, the spirit of truth. Of course, you know, the first thing, 
Papa says today, we worship in spirit and in truth. So I'm like, okay, I got to dig into that, see what that means. Okay, so I look up the word true. Now, get this. I want you to hear these words thinking about Jesus. Is there a Kleenex somewhere? This is true love. Oh, here we go. Thanks. Okay, this is true as an adjective. Accurate or exact. Being in one accord. Fully realized without deviation. Completely loyal. I mean, this is under the, the definition. Ugh. Completely loyal. Faithful. Consistent. Formed accurately. Legitimate. As a verb, it means to bring into exact alignment. True love is exacting. Otherwise, it's not true. True love has no boundaries, no hindrances. It's full-on union. And true love is full of possibilities. In Psalm 15, 2, it says, The one whose walk is blameless, who does what is, righteousness, what is righteous, who speaks the truth from the heart. So truth, when truth comes, it's speaking from the heart. So when the spirit of truth shows up, something is astounding. Okay? So the spirit of truth is this plumb line. So when we worship in the spirit of truth, there is a true heart. There's a true spirit, and that's true love. Okay, so I know you're going, okay, yeah, well, this sounds a bit quaint. Oh, we all love each other. You know, where's the whiz-bang? Where's the fireworks? Where's the exciting stuff? Well, I'm here to tell you, we are not here to see a sign and a wonder. Amen. We are here to become the sign and the wonder. It's, it's a greater calling. There's a greater reward. Why? Because it's a costly treasure. First John 2, dear friends... I am writing to you a new command. Its truth is seen in him and in you. Because the darkness is passing and the true light is already shining. True love illuminates something. It shines. It reveals who Christ is. Okay? So this opens up the way because we now see, oh, okay, I see, oh, you know, it's like the ultimate aha moment. Oh, I see now. I see the way. You see Christ. Um, it's, you know the story of Gideon and Judges? You know, Gideon, the uh, not-so-heroic leader, <laughs> the anti, you know, again, <laughs> God chooses the lowly. Well, okay, so Gideon has to go out and defeat a, a magnificently big army, right? And the Lord keeps reducing his number down to where he's like, oh, dude, we are screwed, you know. I don't know how we're going to do this. And um, so the Lord tells him, okay, here's what you're going to do. So all the guys go out there, and in one hand, they have a clay pot, like a clay pot. And it's got a torch inside. In the other hand, they have their trumpet. And at the assigned time at night, they, they're surrounding this humongoid army and they'll go da, 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 and they break the clay jar and the lights so here's all this noise and this light surrounding this army and they do the freak out and they take off because it created panic so this is what there that is being referred to where we have this um in 2 Corinthians 4, 7, we now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. Why? Because this makes it clear that our power is from God and not from ourselves. Amen. Amen. Like, we want to have the power because it feels real certain. Like, when somebody's pushing your buttons, we'd like to like, hey, 
Let me just do the power thing. Let me just cast out all those buttons. But the Lord's creating something, right? Uh, this, this power is a power of love. It's not a power that vanquishes enemies. It turns adversaries into advocates. So John 14, 20. On that day, this is always so, I can never memorize this because it's too tongue twisting, you know. On that day, you will know that I am in the Father and you are in me and I am in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps him is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved my, by my Father, and I will love him. And this is the key. I will reveal myself to him. How many of you want to see more of Jesus? Abide. Love is just like the noblest poetry because it speaks words of truth from the heart of Christ. So what I'm doing today is I'm speaking to you to confirm this transfiguration. So a mount of transfiguration, you know, the disciples are up there, and lo and behold, there's Moses, there's Elijah with Jesus. Moses uh, represented the law. He was the leader of an exodus. He was a mediator. Jesus was a mediator of a new law, a new covenant. He was also, you know, he, he was leading an exodus, right? And, and this new law is taken from the tablets of stone, and now it's written on your hearts. Okay, so what about Elijah? Elijah represented the prophets. See, Jesus fulfilled the law and the prophets. What do prophets do? Prophets are there to reveal and confirm. A few weeks back, we started talking about the power of confirmations. You know, a thing is confirmed out of the mouths of two or three witnesses. This is why we're confirming the word that's come forth in the end. We're not speaking our own word when we do these confirmations. We're not just speaking something we see from God. We are, we are responding to the word of Christ because it's coming to the heart. This Poetry is coming out of the depths of the spirit of Christ into your heart, into your spirit to transfigure you. And when you confirm that, it reveals something. When you yes and amen something, it gets established. This is what's happening in our body. What we're seeing in the fellowship is it's getting established. The spirit of Christ is being revealed and established in us and through us. This is extraordinarily huge because we are the light. His light is coming in us, through us, in our vulnerable place, you know, where we, we, we give our lives to one another. Suddenly, this huge illumination shines forth to the world, and people are like, um, I know face value. Like, I know that's the picture of Jesus because you see him in all the oil paintings, but... This is intrinsic value. This is worth everything. Like, I will leave home, mother, brother, sister, father, to, for this. I will leave everything behind, riches and glory, for this. I will give my life for this. This is real treasure. This is real value. This is enduring love that cannot be broken. It has no beginning, no end. It is forever and ever. Amen. Amen. In the light of this, you know, I was, I, was, uh, I was talking to Pastor about, you know, uh, we, the elders throw their crowns before the throne. Everybody looks up, the angels and the elders, and they're singing, holy, 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 holy. They're not reading the words on the screen. There are no words on the screen. This is the only response they have to what they're experiencing. You see, worship is created when you see. How important is it for the world to see by your witness, by your example, the way you'll relate to them? You know, we're in the coffee shop. Joel and I are already like, 
stalking out our connection. Because we want these people who serve coffee to us to know something beyond our face. They know our name. Unfortunately, we're in there a lot. But you understand what I'm saying. So this is what happens when we confirm the word. Now, the other thing about, you know, we talked about being a prophetic community. The prophetic reveals something. We do not reveal ourselves. Jesus doesn't reveal himself. Okay? In other words, like Papa Bill, he doesn't toot his own horn. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Just a little, maybe a little. <laughs> or like my gosh, and you say, you have this war about who's the best looking pastor. Anyway, whatever. But my point is, it's when we confirm, God, nobody's loved me like that, like you do. Nobody knows my name like you know my name. I know that, that if I go, you know, to Antarctica and I stray as far as I can get from God... When I turn, you're there. It doesn't matter what I've done. It matters who I'm becoming. And he wants to be part of that, that pours, that gives his life into us that we can become. So I want to exhort you to keep the main thing the main thing. This season between now and Christmas, well, what am I saying? Okay, starting now and not ending, okay? Maybe that's better. I want you to, to think very carefully about this. I want you to shore up your relationships. People you may not have talked to in years. Maybe it might even be your neighbors. It might be like your husband or your wife. Just give. Be open. Position yourself like Christ knowing that you're assigning some intrinsic value by the way that you, you connect. This is really important here, okay? I want you to look for places to connect. You're going to feel the unction of the Lord on this. Don't be like, all right, Lord, you know, my antenna's up. Not that one, not that, that one. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about liberally, abundantly, have that attitude in you that whoever's in front of you, even if you have to go looking for the one, pour it out. That's what you ask the Lord. Pour it out. Pour it out, Lord. Be like a waterfall. Be like a river. Pour it out. Pour it out then. Let's pour this out. This that we've been receiving and accumulating and becoming, pour it out. One of the things Papa does that, that I really appreciate so much is he texts people. I mean, if they're not in here, he's texting. He's looking for those relationships. He's constantly giving, constantly pouring. This is the example that we have. This is the model that we have. This is what he's given himself to be. He's not asking you to become anything he's not becoming also. And he's doing it in a very open and vulnerable way. It's not like any of us have this down pat or that, hey, here's the formula, here's how you do it. None of us do. All we know is that we're going in that direction. We're becoming. We're doing this as a group, as a corporate thing. So I want to exhort you in this. Um, it's really hard sometimes to explain to people, like in the coffee shop, I will never leave you or forsake you. That would be what I say to my coffee. No. But... But, you know, it's hard to say that. But what you do is you have this attitude. You have this attitude in your heart. You have this spirit. And it's like they get in the gravitational pull. It sucked you in. One of the things that we do here is uh, we constantly, constantly refer back to the plumb line. The true we devote ourselves, like it says in Acts 2.42, to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, the breaking of bread, and to prayer. This is what we do in journey groups. What's the apostles' teaching? It is this word that comes forth. We take this word. We digest it. We talk about it. We dissemble it. We, we eat it. We add flesh to the bones. We, we, we take this not at face value. 
you know, what this word that comes down as, as it comes, we, we, we're looking for the intrinsic value that changes us, the power of love to change us. So this is what happens in journey groups. I want to encourage you, if you're not part of a journey group, do it. Do it. Listen, if there's too many people, we can come up with some more houses. That is not a problem. So overrun us, please. And um, so we continue to refer back to this plumb line. We're not trying to become like the early church. That was the start. That's not some kind of like pure expression. That was the start. What we refer back to is Jesus. His example, he is the plumb line, okay? So that's the thing. So we continually position ourselves with people, especially family, to be open, to receive from them just like you would receive from Jesus. It doesn't matter whether they're a good expression or an impure expression. You're, you're sitting, you're positioned in your heart like you're sitting before Jesus. Be risky, be humble, be vulnerable. Don't be offended, but love outrageously, Pour it on, man. Pour it on. So I, w- I want to take some time right here for you guys to be able to do some confirmations. Because this is a really important part of what we do. I mean, we can get up here all day long and you can go, yeah, it's a good word. You know, and there'll be some fruit from that. But there's something about when you are willing to engage the word And it's not just change for you, honey. It's change for all of us. The more of us engage this word and connect with the word, can remember the word is the true thing coming, that that thing, the true word coming out of the heart of Christ. So you're connecting with a person when you connect with the word, and you're allowing that spirit to have power to transfigure you. Every one of us benefits. I get, there's times when y'all's love transfigures me. And it's just like when I was at at Thanksgiving. It's just not the person. It's the person in Jesus, and Jesus in that person. There is something so available. So I want want you guys to engage us. I want to give you a space here in in this today. As we're coming up on the end of our Thanksgiving break, to be thankful for what comes forward, to be thankful for these connections and to confirm them so that as you step up here and confirm, you're revealing Christ. You're shining as bright as the noonday sun. The light of Christ is revealing who he is and who you are. The body of Christ is made beautiful and apparent to the world. Apparent, it's an epiphany and appearing. Yeah, well, we're going through the Christmas season Start now. <laughs> Start now giving the greatest gift of all, which is you. When you guys give yourself to me, you don't know. It's wonderful. There's so much life on it. When I'm away, it's like, oh, I need some of that. You know, and I get in here and worship, and it's like, dang, these people, when they worship, the Lord is just so there. When you're here, he is so here. And I just love that. I love that about all of you, the depth of your connection. So stand up and let me just pray real quick and then you guys can um, do your thing. I'll, I'll just leave that wide open for your response. Lord God, we want the spirit of truth. We want to hear from your heart and we want that to minister to us that we may minister and reflect you to the world. So, Spirit of Truth, I ask that you confirm in the hearts of your people who you are, how you are to us, to the world. This little house doesn't have a little light. This little house shines bright as the noonday sun. This little house is full of life. This little house is full of fruit. And most of all, Lord, we are full of true love. We are full of true love, that enduring love. It cannot ever, ever end. That no thing, not even death, can divide. But the nearness of your love and the nearness of one another is just a testimony to the world. Thank you, Lord God. 
and I ask that you bless each person, whether they come up to you, confirm or they just say yes and amen in their heart. Lord, I pray that you, um, you confirm the word by letting this transform all the people around, that it becomes a gravitational pull that surprises even us. And we just say, praise you, God. Holy, holy, holy is perfect love in Jesus' name. So feel free to come up. Joel, would you grab a mic? And come stand up here and just kind of like help them. Jennifer, you want to help with the mic? Okay. Uh, we say yes to connection and um, just agree to push past any of the boundaries that whether they're in our own hearts or the hearts of those around us that that God's love goes through that and that we just say that those aren't boundaries and that uh, we just say yes to connecting. Before I pass it off, let me just say that we accept the challenge of allowing the power of God's love to turn our adversaries into our advocates. We are just reminded of our highest calling this morning to abide in him and to abide in one another. And we just say no to any distraction that would say um, that it would exalt itself above the glory of God. I want to thank the Lord for dripping his honey from heaven through Cheryl this morning. That as we go this morning, our very essence will be changed by telling nervous. <laughs> very essence will be changed by the beauty and the truth and the love. And as we go forth, we will be sweeter and more expressive of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Cheryl. And I confirm the word today that what we hear today, we're starting to become today. We're going to become this word life. Thank you. We say today, we say yes, Lord. That we know his voice. We know who we are in him. And that we're mighty prophets. That we don't doubt who we are. But we say we know your voice, Lord. And you're speaking today. And we hear you. And we move as a body of Christ, that we have no doubts about who we are. But we say, give me a word, Lord. Give me a word so I can move and I can change this world. I can change this city. All of you are such a blessing, and I love all of you. So we... Uh we are aligned. We receive your alignment, Lord. Alignment in you. In spirit and in truth, Lord. Fill us with your love. We may be truth in love. And expand the kingdom. Bring your kingdom. We walk in the fullness with you. Advancing. Expanding the king, expanding the kingdom in love and spirit, in the fullness of your truth, of who you are in us. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands to the Lord. I love this thing about connection. See, there's a depth of God that he's revealing to the earth in this hour. It's not just in us, but it's all over the land. God is speaking that we're going to go deeper into his presence, deeper into unity with him, deeper into oneness with one another. But most of all, we're going to become demonstrative of the great love of God to the earth. Amen. Everybody say, Lord, we are your ambassadors of love. You're releasing in us a fresh anointing to reveal Christ through us. It's not about me. It's about revealing you. That's my purpose. That's my mission, in Jesus' name. Put your hand on your head. We seal this word today, Lord. We seal it to our hearts and to our minds. Thank you, Lord, that we're getting day by day greater in the knowledge and the understanding of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Wow. Thank you, Cheryl. That was good. Amen.